Hi everybody, happy Thursday to you, November 3rd. We're already into November, crazy, right? So I wanted to share something with you that I read this morning that just blew my mind. And I said, I wanna share this with my praying friends. So this is in my um, Life Principles Daily Bible by Charles Stanley. This is the one that I post on Instagram. And um, I read every morning and I started Lamentations in my one year reading plan. And this is by um, Charles Stanley. This is a little devotional thought that he gives. And I read it and it's just been on my mind so much. And I want to share it with you and then we'll pray. Uh, barriers to knowing God's will. Lamentations 1 through 2. So this is his reflection and just some little devotional thoughts. In Lamentations, the prophet Jeremiah describes the desolation of Jerusalem after the Babylonians carried off the Jews. Yet we may wonder how the people of Judah got to this point, especially after all of Jeremiah's warnings to them. Jeremiah had told them exactly what was going to happen, Jeremiah 20 verses 4 and 5, but of course they ignored him because of their sinfulness. However, there are some things we should note to avoid their mistakes. Remember, God is always pleased to reveal his will to us. I'm going to say that again. Remember, God is always pleased to reveal his will to us. So beautiful. But at times, we cannot or will not receive the message. Something in our lives is creating a barrier to hearing him. And so this is what perked me up. Oh my gosh, Lord, what barriers are there? I want to know them. I want to avoid them. Obstacles to the believer includes self-will. Sometimes we decide what we're going to do without God's input. Have you ever done that? Sometimes we already decide what we're going to do without God's input. So that makes me think of those women that goes up to the front for prayer. Oh, I, I want to get married to this guy. And then the pastor says, okay, well, is he a believer? No. Well, when is a wedding date? Next month. Well, you've already decided you're going to marry him. Knowing is an not a believer. So you've already decided God's will. And yet you're asking for prayers. So you're like trying to tape a prayer to a troubled marriage because you're marrying a non-believer. So sometimes we do that, you guys. We just decide what we're going to do without asking for God's input. We still talk to him about our plans, even thinking they are so logical that the Lord must agree. But we've stopped listening for his will. A second obstacle to Christians is influence. It's wise to seek God the counsel, but believers must be careful whom they allow to influence them. Many people will say what someone else wants to hear rather than what is actually needed. So we have to surround ourselves with godly Christians that will point us back to Christ and to God's word and to God's truth and will correct us if needed. A third barrier is sin. There are two ways sin hinders our ability to know God's will. First, our spirit is clouded, so we cannot determine God's mind. Second, the Father may not reveal the next step in his plan because he's waiting for us to repent and become willing to obey. A fourth obstacle for believers is distraction. This is the one I'm so convicted about. One of the most subtle obstructions to knowing God's will is busyness. Our hands and our minds are so full we don't have the patience to wait and listen. The Lord does not chase after us, trying to force us to hear him. As Psalm 46, 10 says, cease striving and know that I am God or be still and know he is God. This is his simple solution for clearing the clutter of overbooked lives. This is so good as we prepare for Thanksgiving season and Christmas. We need to let our hands and our minds be uncluttered now mind you you know christmas is so fun and there's so much to do but we need to not be so full of things and stuff and activities and even good things that we overbook ourselves and we're not listening to the lord the next time you seem unable to determine the Lord's will, try slowing down so that you can focus on him. Then consider whether you might have allowed one of these barriers to be constructed between you and God. Ask and he will gladly help you to dismantle it. And I just wrote myself a little prayer. I said, yes, Lord, please dismantle anything that hinders us from hearing you. And you know, it's funny because um, Isaac, we've always had challenges with play. 
he wants to do unusual things, you know, um, unusual play. And so now at 14, he's just now becoming interested in blocks, you know, those little Duplo blocks, the not the tiny Legos that a lot of kids like, but the, the bigger ones, a Duplo, where there's four prongs on the little block. Well, um, right here it says, again, ask God and he will gladly help you to dismantle it. Dismantle what? Consider whether you might have allowed one of these barriers to be constructed between you and God. So it's like, Lord, I'm going to bed too late. I'm staying up watching movies. I'm putting up a block because then in the morning, I'm not going to have the energy to read my Bible. So there's one little Lego block. Okay, God, you know, I, um, I'm in Bible study, but, um, they never call on me, so I'm not going to answer the questions. I'm putting up another block. You know, you've been telling me that I should visit so-and-so, but, you know, I have to go to the grocery store, and I got to do this, I got to do that, and another block. And so the busyness of life and our own flesh, our own sinful tendencies, others that are influencing us, you know, I think of friends that sometimes draw us away from the Lord because maybe they just want to have fun. I love fun. You love fun. But sometimes we could have a friend that could distract us and woo us to do things that God might want us to do something else. So for example, let's say you, you know, you're going through a trial and you want to wake up a little earlier to pray and read. And so you set your alarm for, I don't know, let's say five 30. And then a friend texts you and says, let's have coffee at six. And so you're thinking, Oh, that sounds great. I want to see this friend that's going to crouch into my devotion time. But that's okay. I really want to see this friend. I'll meet up with you later, Lord. And so we, our own flesh and, and the, the good things. So, so many things that we do in life are good. You know, having coffee with a friend, going on a hike, making appointments. You know, this morning I prayed. I said, Lord, show me what I should do for today. And so Isaac has been going to various doctor's appointments. We're trying to get to the bottom of this vomiting situation. So I called his neurologist. They're not answering. I called like three different times. I'm like, you know what? They're not answering. I'm going to just try again later. Like, I'm not going to let this ruin my whole day. And then I get a call from Chalk um, about this neuropsychology appointment. And it's been a big hiccup where we can't, you know, how insurance is and referrals and all that. But finally she said, I got your fax yesterday and, and you know, we have one more hiccup and I'll call you back and we'll try to make your appointment. And it's like she did all the leg, leg work. Well, God allowed this appointment to come through. It's December 7th. But my point is, I'm thinking in my mind, I need to work on cleaning out something. I need to focus on this and do this. And I had certain things that I wanted to do for the day. And sure enough, phone calls and distractions and other things come in. And they will try to take us away from what God has already told you to do. I hope this is making sense. The point is, we don't want any barriers to block God's will. We want to be in God's will. And it might be something simple like texting a friend today. It might be something simple like praying with someone over the phone. Or it might be something big like, you know, surrendering an idol. Maybe God has been telling you to cut off a certain TV show or stop, you know, going on YouTube and reading this yucky stuff, you know, I mean, like news, we're inundated with news. And we need to sometimes just stop and say, Lord, what is your will? I want to be in your will. Amen. I hope that encourages you. And so Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Dr. Charles Stanley and these knee insights. We don't want to have barriers um, to knowing your will, to walking in your will, to abiding in you, Lord. That's what you said in John 15. Abide in me and I in you and you're, you'll bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. And God, we confess and we admit that apart from you, we can do nothing. Apart from you, our life is a mess. Apart from you, our hearts are a mess. Apart from you, our thoughts are a mess. Lord, unclutter our thoughts. Lord, unclutter our hearts. Lord, unclutter our schedules. Help us to be still and know you are God. What a refreshment, Lord. I'm refreshed by these words. I'm refreshed with all of the busyness. And even this week, as it's been a lighter week, I haven't had court this week. I said, and I say again, to, I said privately to you, Jesus, and I'll say publicly with my friends hearing us pray together. Thank you, God. Thank you that you got us through the challenging week of Isaac's COVID test and the MRI and him vomiting last week to this week has been lighter. 
And I thank you that it's been lighter. I thank you that I was able to wash the dishes and listen to a beautiful Bible teaching message from Peter on trials that my sister in Christ, Audrey, forwarded to me. I thank you that we can be still and know you are God. I thank you for these moments of prayer and praise. Lord, may we be worshipers, not just beggars asking you for things left and right. We have our laundry list of prayer needs and they will forever be long. But we just want to take a moment to worship you. Lord, you are the refiner's fire. Burn away the dross of our lives. Burn away the dross of our hearts. Purify me, God. Purify me. Make me holy. Make me like you, Jesus. Make us. We're praying together. Make us holy, for you are holy. Burn away the distractions. Burn away the fear. Burn away anxiety. Burn away ugly thoughts. Burn away depression. Burn away the fears of the future. Burn away the, the um, when we go on social media and we see this family has this and that wife has that and this ministry has this and we feel less than. Lord, that is not from you. You have made us fearfully and wonderfully and you desire us to be exactly where we are with the strengths and the gifts that we have and even with the weaknesses we have. Lord, help us to think less of ourselves and think more of you. Heaven is your throne. We stand in awe of you. You are a matchless God. This rain that you provided, beautiful, beautiful rain, allowed for today a gorgeous blue sky, cloudless day of sunshine, and the roses are blooming, and there's still dew drops on, on the plants from the rain. I thank you for the rain. You are the God of the rain. You are the God of the snow. You are the God of the summertime. You are the God of the leaves changing. You are the God of every season. You are God on high. You are God most high. El Elyon, hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you for who you are. Lord, help us to praise you more. More love, more power, more of you in our life, God. You are El Roy, the God who sees. You see us when we're winded and we're weak and we're tired. You see us when we wake up energized and ready for the day. Lord, we can't do anything apart from you. So we want to abide in you and walk with you and cling to you and worship you. We worship you for the, for this um, November month, the month of Thanksgiving. May we always be thankful every single month, every single day of the year of our lives, God. Thank you that we're not who we used to be. Sinners, depraved. Lord, your word says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. May we not forget how wretched we were, but that you have given us your amazing grace. May you give us beautiful opportunities to share your grace love, this grace gift of Calvary with others. Lord, this weekend is the Harvest Crusade. I pray a special blessing over Pastor Greg Laurie. I pray for the worship teams, all of the amazing uh, worship artists that will be singing. I pray for all the youth groups that will be there. I pray for repentance and revival. I pray for highest praise that you would meet every single person there in Anaheim. I remember during COVID there was no harvest and it was so sad. And year after year, Lord, we're, we're back to things being open again, graduations and weddings and church services and small group gatherings and something as big and beautiful as the Harvest Crusade. Bless it, Lord Jesus. I just drove the other day and I saw a sign on someone's porch and it said Harvest Crusade and in the back it said this way to heaven. And that is exactly right. When we repent of our sins and we come to you, Jesus, that is the way to heaven. You are the way, the truth, and the life. So I pray for all of the people going. I pray for all the people serving. I pray for all of the people that don't know you. They don't know that that's going to be the day that they get to know you, Jesus, and be saved from death to life. So please do an amazing, miraculous work. I pray for Pastor Greg. Keep him healthy. There's so many evil yucky flus going around. Keep them healthy, my Lord, my God. I also pray for little Micah, our friend Richard Mulder's son, who's been battling some strange virus. He was in the hospital for five hours yesterday. I praise you, God. He's home. He's doing better. He's home. I give you gr glory and honor and thanks for that. But I pray you would continue to touch little Micah and heal him, Lord. I pray for all of those battling COVID, rhinovirus, the flu virus, um, other horrible things like cancer, Lord, um, Parkinson's, dementia, 
whatever the woes are, whatever the health issue, Lord, that woman with the issue of blood, she battled 12 years and she pressed in to touch the hem of your garment and she was healed and she was made whole. Lord, I pray for those that are ill today that you would touch them. I pray for Isaac. Give him a good day at school today. I thank you that he's been doing so much better. I thank you that he's been vomiting less and less. I thank you for all of those who have been ill, that you've been giving them improvements. For Laura Tomaloso, she had... um a tumor on her on uh, she had a tumor surgery on Friday and I believe that the surgery was a success thank you for that be with her be with her husband be with her children Lord I pray for the widows right now this very moment who are aching in their hearts missing a loved one who's passed on whether they've been a widow five years ten years or five five months comfort the widows this morning I'm thinking of so many Sherry Tima Vivian Kathy Francie, my mom, um, this woman, Julie, who lost her husband to um, suicide. Miss Kayla, who lost her husband to a tragic car accident. I pray for all of the widows, the younger widows and the older widows and every woman in between. Would you comfort them, Lord? I pray for the widowers, those men that have lost a wife. It's Thanksgiving. They're going to miss their bride, their precious um the, the one that was always in the kitchen making the meals. Be with those husbands that have lost a wife. Would you comfort them? Be with their aching hearts, Lord Jesus. I pray for those that are so helpless for a certain prayer request. They feel like too embarrassed to share it. I pray for that unspoken prayer request that I'm thinking of and that my sisters and brothers are thinking of right now, that unspoken prayer request. Maybe it's an upcoming court date. Maybe it's migraines. Maybe it's a stomach pain. Maybe it's a prodigal child. Something that they think about often, but they don't share, but you know all about it. I pray for these unspoken prayer requests, these things that are in our hearts and our minds, but maybe we're too ashamed or too embarrassed to share, Lord. This is holy ground. We're laying all of our petitions at your feet, even the ones that have been unspoken, Lord. We lay them all at your feet. I'm thinking of someone right now, Father, that a, a woman that has been wanting to step into ministry, but she's been embarrassed to do so, or she hasn't felt that she's gifted enough to do it. Would you speak to her heart, Lord, and give her that um, ability to do this ministry. There's a special calling you're placing on the sister's heart and she hasn't stepped up and she hasn't stepped in. Would you give her that strength and that grace to do it, Lord? I pray for those people that maybe need finances right now. This economy is horrible. Would you please bless their finances? You are Jehovah Jireh. I thank you for the way that you provide exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. I'm praying for one of my clients right now who um, it, the case has been going on and on and on. I pray for a closure. I pray that you would convict the wife, bring conviction to her soul. I pray for our friend Henry, whose wife just filed for a divorce, Lord. Married over 20 years, it's devastating. I lift them up to you. I pray for all the prodigals, the backslidden people. I pray for my sister in Christ, Laura Ramirez, as she has these um, problems with her hands. Every winter, she gets these um, cuts and uh, skin splits on her hands, and it, it's debilitating. It makes it hard for her to work in her kitchen and serve her family. So I lift that need up to you, Father. And I'm just so thankful the, for the blessed privilege of praying. As it says in Titus, we're looking for the blessed hope. We're looking for Jesus, our living hope. We cannot wait to be with you. As it says right here, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness. Oh Lord, help us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Lord, you are our blessed hope. You are our living hope. You are the anchor for our souls. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're looking to you, God, to be saved, not just um, our eternal salvation, but the daily struggles that we go through. You are our hope. I pray for Amy Clark and the, the prayer request she shared with me for her family in Oklahoma. Lord, you know the situation, the, all of the ugly details, all of the the mess it's a mess and lord would you go and intervene and supernaturally divinely intervene in this messy situation and bring life and bring hope to these family members of my precious sister amy clark and i also want to pray for lauren's baby shower this saturday that it would be a blessing i pray that lauren would know jesus that you are real and you're the one that's creating this baby in her womb i pray for all the family that will be there that they would know god that you are god and you are good and so much more I want to pray for, Lord, but I just ask God that you would help us 
to just rest in your promises, to feed on your faith, faithfulness, to trust that revival is coming. We pray for the upcoming election that Christians would go out and vote. We pray for the unborn that you would protect them in the wombs, God. That those that are contemplating and wanting an abortion, that there would not their car would not start, their debit card wouldn't work, they would not have a ride, that you would not allow them to get this abortion, that you would save these babies, God, and use their lives for your glory, Jesus. And we pray for godly leaders. We want revival in California, in Utah, in Idaho, in New York, Arizona, Texas, all over our nation. Oh, and my sister in Christ, Esther, who is has this battle at work, she asked for prayer. Lord, you know the situation. And your word says, though none, no, though everybody abandoned me, the Lord stood, stood with me. Would you stand with her? Would you stand with my friend, Esther? Give her that strength that she needs this very moment. Be with all of us in the rest of our day. And I just thank you for the privilege of intercession. I thank you, Jesus, that you take all of our mumbled and jumbled prayers and you interpret them and you make them to something beautiful. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and help us to be more like you. In Jesus' precious, beautiful name we pray. Amen.